Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On the subject of nominations and cooperation, I did want to speak for just a moment this morning because there is one nominee that was not renominated, and that is Casey Arrowwood, who was nominated to be U.S. Attorney for the Eastern Division in Tennessee, and there is no doubt he is well qualified for this. He served our country as a captain in the Army. He was in the Obama Justice Department's National Security Division. He has had a sterling career as a federal prosecutor, and he received several awards during his time in Eric Holder's DOJ. And there is nothing about his record that would disqualify him from being a U.S. attorney, but the clock ran out on him, and President Biden has chosen not to renominate him. All of this did come as a surprise to me because it was the Biden White House that had recommended him for this seat. And I was even more surprised to learn that the reason you refused to move forward with his nomination and the reason the White House ultimately chose not to renominate him is because another member of the committee had concerns about one of the cases that he prosecuted. And I'm not going to get into the details of the case, but the prosecution in question was authorized by the Obama Justice Department, and there is absolutely zero evidence that Mr. Arrow would act in anything but an ethical and professional manner in exercising his duty as a prosecutor in that case. My colleagues' alleged concerns, I feel, are, are baseless. And as you know, Mr. Chairman, I have had serious reservations about many of the nominees who have come through this committee over the last couple of years. I have always followed the committee's longstanding process for registering my opposition to those. You and I have discussed this. I have never demanded a roll call vote on any U.S. attorney or U.S. marshal nominee. And I have never demanded a floor vote on any of these nominees. When I've had an objection, I have simply asked to be recorded as a no without obstructing the committee's work. And it has become clear, however, that there is a new standard in this committee for U.S. attorney nominees. You allowed another member of the committee to submit multiple rounds of questions for the record to Mr. Arrowwood, and this stalled the nomination. And then you decided to let the nomination lapse because another member of the committee had concerns about him, rather than proceeding with a voice vote on his nomination and allowing my colleague to record their opposition as a no, there was a decision to nullify his nomination and to leave the people of Eastern Tennessee without a U.S. attorney. This is a well-qualified, good man who has served our nation well. If Mr. Arrowwood, who was initially recommended by the Biden White House and who has a sterling record as a veteran and a federal prosecutor, was so objectionable that he required a roll call vote, then going forward, I will simply apply the same standard to all nominees that come before this committee. Anytime I'm considering a U.S. attorney or U.S. marshal nominee, I will be sure to ask myself whether that nominee is more objectionable than Mr. Arrowwood, and I will request a roll call vote on any nominee who does not satisfy that exacting standard. So let me close by reminding you that this is not the first time the committee has thrown process out the window for a Tennessee nominee. And it is not the first time or the only time that Senator Haggerty and I have been treated 
differently with disrespect or blindsided by the committee's nomination process. You are once again setting a new precedent for nominees who come through the committee, and if this is your precedent, then I will follow your lead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Blackburn, and we've had several conversations about this situation, uh, and it is true that there was opposition to his nomination from more than one member uh, on the Democratic side. Uh, it is the White House's decision on uh, renomination, and they have decided at this point not to renominate this individual. Uh, so I, I can't change that, uh, and that is the reality that we face. 